on that text and I asked her, can you just send it to me so I can just hear it, so mm -hmm. get my spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. I sat at my kitchen table and wept. Oh, and yeah. wept. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I, I wept because of the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. I wept because of his blessings. Yeah. Yeah. And I could see segments of my life Amen. where I sought the Lord Amen. and he yeah. answered and he heard me and he answered my prayer. Yes, Lord. Ooh, Thank God, you. God, God, Thank God. You, There's Jesus. no one like you. There is Woo! no one like you. And I just, I just, Thank I you, was in yes. joy. Woo! I was just weeping. Amen. I was just Amen. weeping and couldn't stop Woo! this morning when you sent me that song. Woo! And I just praise God for it. Amen. I praise God for the people that produce it, Amen. to touch our spirits yes. and our souls, yes. and to speak Amen. out to other people. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So I'm just going to open up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy Jesus. each and every day, Lord God. Amen. We thank you, Lord God, for the air that we breathe, Lord Amen. God. We thank you, Lord God, for raising us up for such a time as this. Amen. I ask that you go out upon our city, Lord God, out upon our United States, Lord, yes. and bless and keep blessing the ones yes. that are hurting, Amen. Lord God. Heal the ones that need to be healed today, Lord. We ask that you touch them, Lord. As the song said, that, that we, we uh, look to you, Lord, and you heard and you answered, Lord God. And Lord, as we seek you, Lord God, we know that your ear is tentative to us. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for that. Amen. We ask that you bless our bishop and our pastor, Lord God, as they go about their journeys and their life. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I am so blessed to be able to stand before you today Amen. and to have the freedom that our bishop and our pastor gives us Amen. as members of Everlasting Word Church. Amen. I was thinking about that while I was weeping about the freedom that they yes. allow us to speak God's word, Amen. God's truth, Amen. you know, because they know that everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has a story to tell. Yes. My message is the power of faith. There is power in faith. Yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. And I'll be coming mainly from uh, Luke 8, 43 through 48. That will be my main text. But I'll throw in a couple other scriptures along the way. Now, in Hebrews 11, 1, and I'm going from, coming from the NLT, New Living Translation Bible. It said, faith shows the reality of what we hope for it is the evidence of things we cannot see. That's what faith is. We know, we know what we know, what we know. and nobody can change what we know. Amen. Because we know that God has done things for us, yes. that He has done things for us that He's not done for other people, and He has showed Himself faithful and true. Amen. And to have faith, you got to know what you know. That's right. And stand on that. And stand on it. But I'm going to read the scripture, and then we're going to unpack it a little bit. It says, uh, a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure coming up behind, no cure coming. She came up behind Jesus. She touched the, the fringe of his robe. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked everyone, denying it. And Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt the healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell, uh, and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him, and she had been immediately healed. And he said, Daughter, to her, your faith has made you, has healed you, will go in peace. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, this is only a few scriptures, a short story, but it's powerful. When you break it down, it is powerful about this woman's faith yes. that she had in Jesus. Now, as I was, I was looking, I said, let me look at the woman first. Let me look, not what she did, but let me look at the woman first. Yes as I was dissecting and, and studying, the woman had no name. Her name wasn't Sarah. Her name wasn't Ethel. Her name wasn't uh, Martha. She had no name. 
Nobody knew her by a name. She was just the lady that had the issue with blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we all have issues in our lives. They come, they go, some are big or some are small, but we all have issues. If you think you don't have an issue, then you need to search yourself and examine things and see where God can come in and help you with these issues. But we all have issues. Some are internal, some are external. Some we can see and some we can't. Some might have a problem with uh, alcohol or drugs or, or have a medical issue. Some have inner issues, internal issues that are anger, pain, things like this. So we all have issues from time to time. And sometimes they're compounded on other things. But this lady had an issue for 12 years and she was bleeding. And that led me to think about the pandemic. She couldn't be around anybody. Because in the Old Testament, it said that she was unclean because she was bleeding. She couldn't be around her friends and her family, just like we couldn't be with the pandemic. How isolated we felt because we couldn't connect. Now, this woman didn't have a TV. She didn't have a phone. She didn't have any of the modern convenience that we had. But we still felt isolated, being uh in our own homes and not being able to go out because we had we couldn't go to the store we couldn't go to the restaurants we couldn't go to the movies kids couldn't go to school people couldn't go to their jobs we were isolated because of the pandemic this lady had been isolated for 12 years nobody could go around her and she couldn't go around anybody else and then i started wondering how did she hear about jesus if she was by herself how would she hear about Jesus? Did she have a girlfriend that wrote a note to her and slipped it under the door? Did she stand by the window as the people passed by and heard them speak about this man of God? Did she hear about from the doctors? Because it said that she had, in uh, Mark 5, it said that she had spent everything that she had to cure, to get seek a cure and was cured. Her, her, um, her ailment only became worse. Even though she spent all that she had, her ailment become worse. And we do that in life. To this day, we do that in life. Mm -hmm. People that have ailments, uh, drug addicts and, and alcohol and, and different things, ailments, we spend all that we have and it only makes it worse. And the doctors will take your money as long as you got it. They will take your money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to know that there is a better way that there is a better way. Because I was thinking when the woman didn't have a name, how many times have you heard, oh, you know that alcoholic around the corner there? Mm -hmm. or, or you know that uh, the lady that always complains down the road there, she doesn't have a name, but they know her symptoms. And they mm -hmm. call them by her symptoms. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did with this lady. They called her by her symptoms. You know that drug addict, you know, he's a couple blocks over there, you know who he is. They, they do by your symptoms because they don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's inside of you. They don't see the pain that's inside of you. And as, as she was going along, she says, I got to get there. I got to get to this man that I've heard so much about. I've got to get to him. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know who, but I've got to get there. I've got to touch this man they call Jesus. Because in this time, it was before Jesus died. It was before he died. But he was coming in all power and authority Amen. and God. Amen. He was doing miracles, signs, and wonders yes. right and left. Amen. He was doing Amen. these things. He was yes, he doing what God had told him to do. So she said, I've heard about this man. I don't know, but I need, I've tried everything else. I've spent all my money. I need to see this man. I need to see him. And as she was going forth, she, I could just see her pressed, pressed mm -hmm. in between these people. Because there's so many people who heard about Jesus that she was pressed in there. Have you ever been to a concert where you're pressed like peas in a pot? Mm -hmm. She was pressed in there. She, but she knew she had to see Jesus. She knew that she had to go forth with it and, and see him. She didn't know how. She didn't know why. She didn't know what she was going to do when she gets there. She didn't know how he was going to react.
but her faith led her there because she said, I need some healing. I need some relief. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're going to seek Jesus. You're going to seek Jesus because you've done spent everything you can. You've done talk to all the doctors. Mm -hmm. You've done talk to your friends, your co-workers, your parents. You're going you're gonna to seek Jesus Amen. because he's the only one that can cure you. He can, he's the only one that can take it out of you. Amen? Amen. 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 But then as she was pressing forth, you know, they said that she couldn't be out because mm -hmm. she was unclean. And everything that she touched was unclean whenever she came out. Do you know that all the people that she was pushing out of the way, she was touching them. And they were unclean and didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. They were all unclean as she was making her way to see Jesus. And I started thinking about that. Yes. And I say, unclean people that have issues, they think it's only them. Mm -hmm. They think it's only, you're never alone. Right. When you have Jesus in your life, you're never alone. Amen. But you are touching everybody in your family when you mm -hmm. have an issue. You are touching everybody in your circle when you have an issue. You think it's only you that this is bothering no, this is bothering your family, yes. your co-workers, Amen. your community Amen. in all of this. That's right. Amen. It's Amen. not just you. Yes. Because this is not all about you. That's right. This Amen. is about Jesus. Amen. This is about Jesus. But as she was touching them, they were all being unclean. And not knowing. Yes. Not knowing because yes. they didn't know this lady. They had never seen her because she was isolated. Mm -hmm. They didn't know who she was. And when you go through things. You are affecting everyone in your house. Mm -hmm. You are affecting everyone in your neighborhood, Amen. everyone so in your true. school, everyone in your job. You are affecting people. Amen. And mm -hmm. you think it is just you. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 And then when she came upon him, she touched the fringe of his garment. That's what it said, his fringe. Now, I thought about that. You know, like I said, this is a small story. But it has a lot of different entities in this whole oh, yeah. story. And that's when we read the Bible, we need to stop and we ponder yeah. and let God speak to us. Read a verse and just sit there and let God speak to you about this mm -hmm. verse. So that, that he she touched the, frim, the fringe of his robe. Now, when, why the fringe? Why the fringe? Why did she touch his back, his arm, even his sandal or his feet? Why the fringe of his garment? And I did some research on that. The fringe of a priest's robe was very special. Was very special. Because they had made it back in the day, in uh, I think it was Numbers 15, 37 through 40, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Well, this is what the Lord told Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel, Throughout the generations, you must make tassels from the hem of your clothing and attach them with blue coils. When you see the tassels, you will remember and obey all the commandments of the Lord. Instead of following your own desires and defile yourself as you are prone to do, the tassels will help to remind you that you must obey all the commandments and be holy to your God. Amen. So those tassels yes, you, that they were wearing mm -hmm. on the fringe, and they were on all four corners mm -hmm. of the robe. They, whenever they walked, they could feel those long tassels. Mm -hmm. They were longer than the rest of the little tassels. Mm -hmm. And when they walked, they hit their legs or they hit their arms, and it reminded them who I am and what my purpose is Amen. and why I'm going for it. Amen. Those were reminders. Yes. That's why she touched those tassels. Yes, amen. Because she, somebody must have gave her the word of God. Mm -hmm. Somebody must have told her uh, about those tassels for her to want to touch them. She didn't have to touch him. She had to touch those tassels, but he was wearing it. He was wearing it. Ooh, when I read that, my, my, my whole thing went way on up there. You know, <laughs> God amen. is teaching me. Amen. 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 And uh, I, I want to learn about those tassels because God does not misuse anything. It's right. not by happenstance mm -hmm. for anything in our lives today. 
as it was back then in the olden days. But God does not misuse or just throw out something. Yeah. There's a purpose for everything he does and everything he says. We may not know it because our thoughts are not his thoughts. But there is a purpose for it if you dig deep enough yes, and you understand. Uh, it said those tassels were on their clothes specifically. Specifically, he used them this idea on the corners of the garment. He used this word, and it said C-C, and it was, the word is spelled T-Z-I-T-Z-I-T. -Z -I -T -Z -I -T. That was the word in the Hebrew word. And it basically is a word that we now translate into tassels mm -hmm. in the modern English. Now, the tassels are very interesting. Here, and at the uh, four corners of the garment, to see that these were fascinating, that you'll notice there's a specific knots in them. There's specific knots, specific strands in, in the tassels. It said uh, there's five knots that represent the five books of Torah, the five books of God that he first put out. Those were the five knots, and they were longer. He said, uh, and the law for the first book of the Bible, this is the law that God gave in the same way. They were wrapped. There are four sets of wrappings. Here in between the knots, and in those wrapped, we would have, they would dye the, the, the threads. They would dye them blue, because that's what the word said. He wanted those blue uh, to go through the other, the other threads. And they would dye them like with blueberries and things like that in those ancient days. And he said that they, uh, they were wrapped here in between the knots. Mm -hmm. And in those wrappings, we know that they were dyed blue. And it, it would have wound in through the knots. This is representing the laws of God. Mm -hmm. So when they walked, they felt the books. Mm -hmm. They felt the laws. Wow, Amen. They felt the powers of yeah. God mm -hmm. when they walked. They felt the authority of God Amen. when they walked. There was no fear when they came at, when Jesus came into the crowd because he worked with all power and all authority. Amen. Those knots were specifically there for a purpose. It was for the priest to keep reminding me mm -hmm. who I am and who I'm working for and who I stand for and give me the strength to go forth. Amen. 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 And in this, he basically said, command the Israelites to put these tassels, to put on the cc's on the four corners of the garment, and then when they had walked, they would literally be walking as these would touch the ground. They were walking with the word of God. Wow. Amen. 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 So that was, just, that was just awesome to me. Mm -hmm. Just to know, just a simple thing, a tassel. And what that tassel meant when she touched it. Amen? Amen. 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 That's awesome. And as we, as we look and we reflect on the powers and the momentum of Jesus' uh, ministry, as recorded in the Gospel of Luke, the passage is about a woman who had been suffering for 12 years, seeking healing in faith and finding it a simple yet profound act. Her story tells us about the power of faith, the compassion of Jesus, and the transformation impact of an encounter with the divine. Because it, what had happened if she had said, well, I know this man, but I'm unclean and I can't go out. What would have happened to this woman if she had not activated her faith? For me, faith has to be activated. Yes. It's an action word. It's an action word. I mean, we can sit all day long, prophesy, Say, God's going to do this and God's going to do that. God's going to give me a job. But if I don't activate my faith, yes. if I don't go out and put applications in, that's, right. that's Amen. activating my faith. Amen. It's, they're not going to come knocking at your door. That's right. They're not going to come and say, oh, i got a job for you. You look like you'd be the best person for it. They don't know you. They don't know you're looking for a job. And if you're going to buy a house, Mother Eloise, mm -hmm. Activate that faith, Amen. which you Amen. already did. Yes. Activate. She went. You apply. You go look for loans. You go people that can represent you to get that home. Mm -hmm. Activate that mm -hmm. faith. Amen. They don't know that you're uh, you're looking for a home. Right. They think you're happy where you're at. Right. Activate that 
faith. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going through, activate that faith. Amen. That's what I that's what I'm here today to tell you. Activate the power of faith. Amen. Ooh, there's nothing like the power Amen. of faith. I know that personally. Yes. Yes. That's how you I know that personally. Yeah. That you gotta activate that faith. You gotta go forth with even though you don't know how, you don't know why, you don't know where, you just go forth. You just go forth with it. You know, and if you don't like the bishop in Jaria. If you don't like what your community is doing, go for it. Activate that faith. That's Get involved. Right. Get involved to change things in your community. Get involved with changing the world. Get involved. Amen. Don't just Amen. sit and complain and be like the lady down the street that's always complaining, but they don't know your name. Mm -hmm. I want them to know my name. That's right. Amen. I want them to know who this is and who I represent. Amen. Get involved with Amen. this. Amen. Now, this lady had a desperate situation. Mm -hmm. She had suffered from conditions that not only caused her physical pain, but made her rituals unclean according to the Jewish law. This, can, uh, this can isolated her from society, family, and worship. Mm. Things that we go through can isolate us also from worship. People say, I can't come back till I get it right. Isolating you. The enemy will whisper in your ear, you're unclean. You can't do this. Mm -hmm or you don't have a degree, you can't do this. He will whisper in your ears. But these tricks he's tried and tried before, and people just pushed him out of the way and kept on stepping by faith, by faith. Said uh, for 12 years, the lady had spent everything that she had on doctors, and yet her condition only grew worse. Imagine her dis desperation, desperation, her isolation, and her exhaustion. That's where when you're tired and sick and tired or being sick and tired. Amen. I've done everything I know. I have no other backup plan. Yes. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. 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 And in Luke 8, 25, as Jesus was out there in the boat with his disciples and the storm came up on the seas and they run to Jesus mm -hmm. and they say, Master, Master, we're going to drown. And, and Jesus looked at him and said, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Yes, Lord. And I'm asking you today, where's your faith? Mm -hmm. Is it at home in a drawer? Is it, is it under the sofa? Or is it right here with you? Are you carrying your faith every step of the way? Amen? Amen. Despite her suffering, this woman had an unwavering faith. That's when I say, when you know, when you know, when you know. Ain't nobody can change my faith because I know what God has done for me. He may, you might not have seen it, but I know. And that's all that's important to me is that I know. She had heard about Jesus and believed that if she could only touch the edge of his cloak, she would be healed. This belief prepared her through the crowds, her faith driving her to take the critical steps. She had to, she had to push her way through to get to Jesus. She wasn't just a, a step away. She had to be up next to him to get her healing. And she knew that. And she didn't know if the guards were going to come in and stop her or push her to the side or whatever. She didn't know, but her faith let her know that it's going to be all right if I could just touch it. And then it says, the heal, and it healed her. But the faith behind the touch in a moment, her condition was reversed, and her suffering ended in a moment. So much of us don't see that moment ahead. We see the here and now. We don't see that moment ahead. A lot of people can't see ahead of tomorrow. They only see what's happening today. They can't see that there's a better tomorrow if you just speak to God. And ask him. Ask him. He will hear you if you are part of his family. And as she was healed, Jesus looked around and his response. And he said, who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples, what did they say? Master, all these people around you, what do you mean who touched me? He said, no, somebody touched me. Somebody touched my healing spirit. Somebody touched my soul. Somebody had enough faith to push through a crowd. Ooh, 
to get healed. Somebody Amen. touch my soul. Amen. His disciple was perplexed, pointed out the pressing of the crowd, but Jesus knew that this was no ordinary touch. <laughs> this was a touch of faith, the power of faith, the things that you can't see but you know, but you know that you know that you know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It was a touch of faith. When the woman came forward, trembling and afraid, Jesus addressed her with tenderness. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Amen. He acknowledged her faith, affirmed her worth, and sent her away with the blessing of peace. Jesus responded, highlights his compassion and his willingness to engage with those who are often marginalized or overlooked. Mm -hmm. Guys, God loves the people that nobody knows and raises them up. Amen. He loves to show his power, his strength, and his glory. He will use whatever he needs to prove to people and to show people that he is God. And that's an awesome thing because I love to just sit and look around and see all the goodness of God. Amen. Things that I didn't plant came up as flowers. Mm -hmm. Things that you know, he does the wind, the earth, everything, and just watch the storm move over our house. You know, I was telling you that my grandson, he had uh, made it to Mexico. We hear so many tragedies on airplanes yes. and things, but God had his hand. Yes, he did. Amen. God had his yes, hand on him. And I know this. This I know, and I know, and I know. All right, Amen. now. You know, I mean, you yes, can't tell me that God can't do anything. Yes, he, he can do whatever he chooses to do, and yes, I'm good he. with it. Amen. I am Amen. good with yes, it yes. because his, his promises are good. Yes, they are. Always. They are good all the time. Mm -hmm. And it says, what can we learn from this encounter? Faith is action. We're not going to sit around weeping and, oh, oh me. Oh, poor old me. I can't get this. No, I'm going to get up and I'm going to move and I'm going to get some action out of this. I know that God is with me and I'm going to step on out into it. Amen. As the bishop in Jerusalem, they know God's with them. Mm -hmm. They know that this is time. God's done spoke to them. Yeah. All we have to do is pray and encourage. Amen. That's our uh, that's our purpose right now Amen. is pray and encourage. Amen. Amen. Because God's going to work it out. He's going to be in the midst of it. Amen. Amen. The woman's faith was activated, not passive. She did not wait for a healing to come to her. Amen. Amen. She reached out for it. Reach out for it. Whatever you want, reach out for it. We are called to similar faith, one that moves us into action to seek and to trust God's power. God's power. Jesus' compassion, Jesus' response to the woman shows us that he is deeply compassionate and attentive to our needs. He is never too busy for us, and he notices even the smallest action of faith. Ha! The smallest action of faith. It doesn't have to be a big act. Just an act of faith. In Matthew 17, 20 and 21, For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to that mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. Amen. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? Mm -hmm. no. That thing yeah, is just a tiny. little bitty yeah. tiny. He said, if you have that much faith in a mustard seed. Uh, we had went to a convention, me and the pastor and a couple of the other ladies. And in that convention, the speaker yeah, threw out mustard seeds, seeds like oh, this. Yeah. And I, I just scooped them up. I just scooped them up and put them in my purse. Mm -hmm. Scooped them up. And I had those mustard seeds in my purse for years to come. They were in there. And I had went down south uh, to where my brothers live in southern Indiana. And this pastor, <coughs> I heard, was going through some things. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go to church that day. I didn't know the church. I didn't know the pastor. I wanted to go to church. My brother, he doesn't go to church. And he said, okay, I'll take you. So we went to church, and I'm having a good time. They had the choir going and everything. As we were leaving, while the pastor was speaking, he said something. And when he said, his watch flew off of his arm into the crowd. And he just kept on preaching. He just kept on preaching. And as I was leaving, the pastor was standing by the back door to greet everybody that left. And he looked at me. 
And he said, I apologize for that, for that watch coming off my arm. I, I said, no, you did what God told you to do. And it happened the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I took one of those seeds and I placed it in his hand. Amen. And I said, you know, it's going to be all right. Amen. It's going to be all right. Yes. And he just hugged me. I didn't know the situation. I didn't know what was going on. Yes. But by faith. Amen. By faith, I stepped out. Yes. I went to that church. I talked to that pastor to yes. give him the encouragement. It was not me. It yes. was not me. It was by God. Yes. Me having faith in God to go forth yes. to do what he's called yes. me to do. Yes. And, and, and that pastor just hugged me. And my brother looked at me, and he didn't know what to do. So he hugged the pastor, too. <laughs> so, so, you know, God is in the midst. Yes. If you listen to him. And you do what he's called you to do. Amen. But but he said, if you have faith of a mustard seed, a mustard seed is so tiny. Mm -hmm. But as you activate that faith and God shows you who he is, your faith will grow and grow and grow. And before you know, nobody can change that faith. That's right. uh, they can tell you whatever. They can tell you that the sky is green, but God said it's blue, so it's blue. Mm -hmm. Even though it looks like it's green, it's blue. You know, you know, you know. Amen. Amen. We we are reminded to turn Jesus with our troubles, knowing that he cares for us deeply. God loves us, each and every one of us. He, the saved and the unsaved. Don't get it wrong. Amen. He loves the unsaved. He keeps drawing them. Yes. He keeps drawing them to him. And that's why we have to stand up by faith and go to those places and talk to those people that we don't know and we're not sure about. But by faith, we know God is sending us, and we're going to do these things. I don't care if it's a person, your co-workers, uh, a person in the grocery store, wherever he sends you. Amen? Amen. The power of a personal encounter, the woman's healing came through a personal encounter with Jesus. It was not the crowd that healed her, but her direct contact with Christ. In our lives, we must seek a personal relationship with Jesus knowing the true healing and transformation comes from him. I stand here today. I know I'm not the same person I used to be. Yeah. Ooh, I am <laughs> truly, truly not that person. Mm -hmm. And I know, and it's only through Christ. Amen. Lord. And I had an incident a couple of days ago, reminded me. <laughs> it reminded me that I am not that person. Amen. And I turned around and I walked away. And yes. I, just, I just sat there. Mm -hmm. I just sat there. Because if it had been the old Tanya, mm -hmm. whoo, my husband would have been bailing me out of jail. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the way it was. Because, you know, people in this world is in a disarray. Yes. It's in truly a disarray. Mm -hmm. It needs Jesus. It needs people that will stand up for righteousness. Stand up with the power of faith yes. and go forth. Mm -hmm. it, needs to go, it needs to be corrected. It needs to be corrected. The story of the woman who touched Jesus' cloak and his tassels is a powerful testament, testament to the transformation power. Mm -hmm. It teaches us that no matter how desperate our situation may be, faith in Jesus can bring about profound changes. Ooh, profound changes. It also reassures us of Jesus' bountiful compassion and his desires to engage with us personally. Amen. Let us be encouraged to live out our faith actively, to approach Jesus with confidence, Amen. and to touch in his healing power. As we do, may we find the peace and wholesome that comes only he can provide. I want to share a story. Um, my sister-in-law, well, my niece, my sister-in-law too, but my niece, was in the hospital and my husband was with me and they had told me that the doctor said she wouldn't be here long now this is my brother's daughter and said that she wouldn't be here long and I said I told my husband I got up we got to make a trip down south this we got out we got to make a trip down here and she's in the hospital and everything so we get down south to southern Indiana it's about a six-hour trip and we get down there, but I know God is in the midst. And I know he's going to do miraculous things. 
So I know I've got to be there. Because mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, when you know, when you know, yeah. is there, yeah. there's something in your spirit that you just can't sit still. Mm -hmm. You just got to get there. And so we get there, and my, my great niece had told me, said, Mom's in the hospital, and the doctor said, there's no hope for her. I said, okay. All right, that's what the doctor said. Okay. But I know what Jesus said. Amen. Amen. I know what mm -hmm. Jesus said mm -hmm. because I've seen him raise the dead. Yes, yes. I've seen him do things. Mm -hmm. I know what Jesus said. I don't care. The doctor can say whatever he wants to say. Right, that's right. But I know what I know. <laughs> so anyway, we get there, and she takes me up to my niece's room. And I go over there, and she's in and out. They've got her sedated and everything. She's in and out. I says, can you hear me? She shook her head. And I said, okay. So I held her hand, and I prayed, and I prayed for her. And I asked God to heal her and to lift her up and to take all of this illness away from her. Now, my husband's outside because they would only let so many people in intensive care. He's outside. My brothers are outside. The friends are all outside in the parking lot. So I prayed for her, and she received Jesus Christ on that bed. So I said, okay, when I come out of there, I says, uh, I got this isolated part in that parking lot. I said, okay, people, we're going to have church. Amen. We're going to have church in the parking lot of the hospital. We have a church here today. Amen. And they all looked at me and said, gather around. Yeah. Gather around. So we all stood around. I played some music, read some scriptures, did what God called me to do. Amen. And do you know, every person in that my family received Christ on that day. Uh, Each and yeah. every one of them received Christ. My brothers did, their friends did, uh, my cousins did, everybody in that parking lot that was in my group received Christ that day. And you know God brought her out of that hospital? Yes, he did. He brought her up and out of that hospital. Hallelujah. So don't tell me what God can oh, yes, do. If you have the faith to go for it. And what have happened if they said, well, Tanya, your niece is, the doctors say that the niece, your niece is, doesn't have long to live. I just stayed at home. What would happen? What would have happened? Nothing. She, God would have called her home. But I activated. You got to activate that faith. You got to push forward, even when you don't feel like it. You got to push forward. I didn't know how this was going to turn out, but I knew God was in it. Oh yeah. I did not know what was going to happen, but I knew God was in it. So I know it was going to be all good. I knew, but I did not know my part in it. What I, all I knew is I had to get there. Because he doesn't tell you the whole story. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you just a little bit to get you going. But you won't know the ending until it's all over mm -hmm. and you played your part. So I didn't know that my whole family was going <coughs> to receive the prayer of Christ and the sinners and they received Christ. I didn't know that. But, but God knew. Yes. And he sent me there as a messenger. And by faith, I went forth with it. And that's what you got to do. By faith, the power of faith. Amen. You know, faith ain't just a little thing. There's power in it, so much power in it. And it says that her story is a reminder of suffering that exists in our world and the length of which people will go to to find relief. Many people surround Jesus as he was making his way toward uh, the house that is invisible, impossible to get through the multitude, but one moment though her, uh, th uh, made her way through, one woman made her way through, desperate through the crowd in order to touch Jesus. As soon as she did, she was healed. What a difference <coughs> there is between the crowd and the cu curious one about Jesus. See, everybody else that was in that crowd was just curious about him. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know about him. They wanted to see him. They wanted to see what was so great about him. By faith, she walked through. She said, I don't, I don't want to just be curious. I want to touch the man. That's right, amen. I want to be healed. I want to touch the man. Hallelujah. And are you just curious about Jesus? Or do you want to know who Jesus is? Do you want to know who he is and how he can change your life? It says, and who Jesus is, but nothing... <coughs> Nothing in their lives have changed by knowing he is the God, uh, God's son. It is only faith in Christ that releases God's healing power. As you 
just curious about God? Or do you search out for him in faith, knowing that his miracles will bring healing to your body, soul, and spirit? Amen. Where do I go? Amen. We go to the cross. Amen. We Amen. go to the cross. We seek God. And if you really want to know God, mm -hmm. he, you know, in these days, they, they had to do certain things because Luke was telling the people about olden days and things he had heard mm -hmm. and things he had been through, like we do with our children. Amen. Back when mama was a young Amen. girl, Amen. they didn't have yeah. telephones in the schools. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and this is what Luke was telling him about the miracles of God that he heard about. Mm -hmm. He was telling them the stories of things. And, and today, when you receive Christ, he said, I write it on your heart. Amen. I write it on your heart. Hallelujah. And there's a song that says, when I want to do wrong, Amen. I can't do wrong. Oh, who's that from? Hawkins? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Walter Hawkins. Mm -hmm. And he says, when I, when I want to do wrong, I can't do wrong because God's what is spirit. This? Uh, what, is what is this? What is this? That's the song. Yeah. What is this? Mm -hmm. And because he received Christ. And when Christ comes in, he's, he lets you do things that, who is this? Right. Who is this? I'm going, who am I? Right. You know, and you, yeah. you look at things differently. God mm -hmm. opens your eyes and your ears yes. and opens your heart. And you're speaking about things, and you go, oh, I didn't know. I remember that. Amen. <laughs> when my mother was on her deathbed, she sat next to me. Uh, I sat next to her, and the only thing she could sing was, Jesus loves me. This I know. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells me so. Amen. Her faith was activated right, right. in that moment mm -hmm. before she died. Yes. And she had she had been in and out of church. She came here and everything. Mm -hmm. But that moment when she spoke those words, that faith was activated. So I know she's in heaven. Amen. I know oh, she's oh, in heaven. Yeah. You, can't, you can't tell me anything other. Right. I know this because I was sitting by her, side, by her side when she sang those words. And she was singing, girl. I didn't know my mom could sing. You know, and my mom was singing, I know Jesus loves me because the Bible tells me so. That activation of that faith and the power of that faith. And it wasn't long after that, God called her home. God called her home. And, and, and I didn't weep because I knew where she was going. Amen. I saw where she was going. You know, I mean, other people that came to the funeral wept and carried on and do what they do, you know. But I was rejoicing. I was rejoicing in her next journey of life, in her next journey with God. I was rejoicing, you know. I, and I was saying, Lord, I'm coming one day. I'm coming one day. You know, because I knew in that moment that she was with Jesus and the pain was over. The hurt was Amen. over. Yes. I knew those things. But I, I'm just encouraging you today. That faith. Yes. Ooh, yes. That faith has activated so much thing. power. And activated. Yes, yes. Activated. There is nothing like the power of faith. Amen. <coughs> Sorry. And if you don't know Christ, it's time to get to know him. Amen. Amen. I mean, like I said, we all have issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, even us as leaders, we have issues that you can see in the television. Yeah. They, they say that these leaders have issues that are heads of mega oh, churches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We all have issues. Yes, mm -hmm. But we need to touch the hem of his garment. Those yeah. fringes, mm -hmm. those yes, right. fringes are Amen. important. You think it's just a, a piece of string. Or what, those yes. fringes mm -hmm. have a points mm -hmm. and destiny in them. Amen. Because Amen. God never uses anything lightly. Amen. Everything has a purpose and a power yes, in what he does and what he says. Amen. And Jerea, as you were you were talking about, you know, the the man yesterday prophesying, mm -hmm. those are powerful words. Mm -hmm. And those are destinies Amen. for you and the bishop Amen. and where you're going, Amen. where he's gonna take you. Yes. When he prayed over the young people, these legacies. That's right. yes. Those were legacies he was placing, Amen. mantles he was yes. placing yes. on these little children. Amen. When they raised up, they're going to be mighty men and women of God. Because we know that God does not take things lightly. Amen. Everything has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And he puts people into places for such a time as this. Amen. You know, um, as, as I said with, with my niece, he sent me there. Right. He sent me going there. Mm -hmm. But there was a purpose and a reason for that. Mm -hmm. And as he did with when he was prophesying over you guys, he placed a mantle Amen. on those children Amen. to go forth. Yes, and protection yes. 
over them. Because you know that the enemy is going to come yes. and he's going to disrupt some stuff. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. But see, he won't have a chance. Amen. Because God has already got his hand come. around them. Praise the Lord. He's done covered them. Mm -hmm. That they will come back. I knew these children when they were just babes in the strollers mm -hmm. and now they're here ushering mm -hmm. in the church. Right. Right. I'm going to see them 20 years from now, I'll be a little older, praise <laughs> God, if I'm still here, and, and God hasn't called me home, but, but I will see them Amen. up here speaking. Amen. I will see them ushering other kids. I will see them witnessing to the people of the church. Amen. I will see this. Amen. And I just praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Because I know what I know what I know. Come Amen. On. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Amen. God is an awesome yes, God. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that is my message today. Amen. Awesome. So I just thank God for all of you attending. And let's just close Hallelujah. in prayer. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord God. I just thank you for your power, Lord. I just thank you for who you are, Lord. And by faith, we're going to activate it, Lord. We're going to activate it and keep activating him, Amen. Lord. And Lord, we know that you will move in our lives. You will heal, Lord God. Yes. You will deliver, Lord. We know these things, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We just come here to praise your holy name in Jesus.